I often speak in these episodes about how in storytelling, though I'd say predominantly in visual storytelling as it can be less in your face, you can essentially establish what would be a baseline for your storytelling. It's not hard to do, but it can be extremely effective in causing an engagement shift with the reader. And there's two quite different examples of page approaches in the early stages of Bengal, Rick Remender and Russ Wooten's Death or Glory issue one. And I think they're both worth looking at. So I'm gonna take a dive into them in this episode. You're watching Strip Panel Naked, I'm Hass, and I'm gonna show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics. So here's the first three pages of the story as rendered by Bengal. The thing that's noticeable for this example is how every panel takes place mostly at eye level. Some very slight variations like the second panel on page one, but for the most part each panel is drawn as though we, as the reader, are just kind of like stood there in the space watching it take place. There's little pushed response from Bengal or Remenda in terms of how we should view these characters, instead just offering them up as they are, just these two regular guys. It sets a scene of exactly that too, normality. It looks like our world, it feels like our world, and we're just right there with everyone else kind of observing it. Along with that, mostly everything is contained within a panel border, with the exception of the establishing exterior shot on the first page and the final panel of the third page, which is essentially what kicks off all the excitement that's about to come in pages four and five. The point I'm making here is that these first three pages have a very specific voice. It's fully adhered to at the expense of some of the things that Bengal does later with similar scenes, such as the one here in the bar, which switches camera angles and points of view in every single frame. Here instead, Bengal essentially restrains himself in purpose of telling the story in a visual way. He essentially dampens the visual impact of these scenes so that the next pages look even more dynamic by comparison. He essentially kind of tones down what I feel would be his natural or more usual approach. But it also works because of the style of the page as well, and the reaction of the man who enters on the second page. His reactions are also muted and dampened, keeping a very straightforward and serious approach to the proceedings. This is at odds with how the two boys act and react in the first page, playing around and joking with each other and, you know, silly faces and things like that. So the strictness of the language in the page actually comes to reflect the situation and the emotion of the man we meet here too. Almost like he is having a very direct impact on the way the story is being told. There is a reason for all of this, of course, both on a fundamental level that these pages are designed to do a certain thing in the script, great normality and a small emotional response to these two boys in the first page, however slight that is, and present them as normal, relatable people, so that when the man comes in, it feels odd. The art and page structure has then been built to emphasise that direction. Whether it works for you or not will be subjective, obviously, but the fact is that these elements are working together, and they show a unity of vision pass through the team. The other reason is that so when everything goes awry in the next couple of pages and the real intense stuff happens, it starts to feel more intense by comparison. Comics is juxtaposition after all, and not just panel to panel, but also page design to page design. The change is pretty noticeable instantly, I think. The camera, if you'll allow me to call it that, for the first time swings underneath the action. A low angle shot looking directly up as the man freezes this chap's face. The angles then switch up for every panel afterwards on both pages, and in fact only about three of those panels across both pages would be close to being eye level shots like the previous ones, and each of those examples hits a canted angle anyway. And the gutters themselves become canted. The world is sort of sliding around all over the place, and it adds chaos to the page, even without the visuals. So here, if you look at the page one and page four next to each other, I've removed the stuff that's actually happening in the panels and just left the shapes of the panels themselves. So you can see that the actual design of the page itself is chaotic. The underpinnings of the presentation of the story seen like this are just as important as the things placed within them. But again, extra emphasis comes from this juxtaposition between the two. So if the first pages are us as readers standing in the room and seeing it from a neutral point of view, these pages are us whipping our heads around to where the action is. Dropping to the ground in fear, seeing everything going off all over the place. Things become a little more forced though, but in a useful way. And by doing that, they help emphasize the targeted emotional response. As in what the creative team are aiming to do. This is about causing fear and danger with a little touch of excitement for the reader as well, so Bengal starts to throw your eye all over the place. Now typically what Bengal does here is lean the panel in the direction of the visuals. So the penultimate panel of the fourth page has the gutter sliding down left, and the angle is canted to the left as well. The second panel of page five leans to the right, and so does the imaginary camera, it leans to the right. We're slipping and sliding as readers, but by doing that it forces this very kinetic sense of movement almost like going from a static tripod that's seen in the first few pages to more of a handheld, almost documentary-like shaky cam approach. 
Each comes with its own baggage as a technique, but the real power is the interplay between them. Individually, if you told the entire story in either of these two ways, they will perform a specific function. One potentially dissolving into the background, and the other maybe making itself a little more apparent and known more frequently. But that's probably where they would end, and that is fine if that's what the story needs. But Bengal's choices on Remender's script lean into the interplay between the two, and that's where it really comes alive as a series of storytelling choices for me. Obviously I've relayed this in sort of filmic terms, but it's a good reminder that there is a way to tell your story from purely framing and angle choices, and seeing how this ties into what your aim is for the reader response to the narrative. What are you trying to get across? Is there a way to choose panel shapes, sizes, and, you know, in quotes, camera placement within the scene that can really drive home the intended effect of the things happening within those panels? The answer is yes, of course, and Bengal, working with Remender and Wooten, show you a great way how in this opening stages of Death or Glory issue one. Thanks for watching. Strip Panel Naked continues to exist in this form thanks to the amazing support of the patrons on patreon.com slash stritpanelnaked. You can check out my now Eisner nominated comics magazine, Panel by Panel at panelxpanel.com. Follow me on Twitter at HassanOE. And finally, hit subscribe and that notification bell to keep up to date with all the latest episodes, and I'll see you next time.